Hello, and welcome to our Extension Ed Talk. Today our topic is kids and cash. You know, it's really never too early to begin to start visiting with children and impacting and influencing their money management decisions. My name is Donna Krug, and I am the Family and Consumer Science Agent in Barton County. Uh, usually, uh, the Extension Ed Talks I have shared in the past have been uh, related to food or health and wellness, so this is a, another new topic. Uh, but you'll find that across the northwest area of Kansas that Extension educators across that area uh, do have information related to family financial management. And certainly, giving kids an early start with learning about money is an important thing to consider. I'm going to go to our first slide, and I have some points that I want to talk about, and I've divided the program today into three parts. Uh, the first point is that money management is a skill that is learned at an early age. And when we think about it, um, ages, at ages three and four, um, you know, children at that age call every coin a penny and they are very good at imitating their parents or other adults, and they really have no concept of time or saving. And so that's very much the very beginning of, of getting kids involved in uh, learning about money. And then at ages five to seven, uh, you know, they don't probably correctly identify all coins, but that it is a good time to start to introduce to, to children that age that money is limited, that there is no money tree in the backyard of your home, and that you know that um, they just need to start getting that concept of maybe saving up for something that they really want. Then when we look at ages eight to 10, uh, they begin to evaluate uh, not only the, the quantity of money or the quantity of things they can buy with their money, but also quality. And they may start to ask about saving for something that is important and especially something that they want. And then we get to the adolescent age of 11, to the preteens, and then their skills with money management really are influenced by their friends. And that is so important. You know, it's, it's very uh, difficult as a parent to compete when the friends are getting new things and saving up and, and maybe your family is not able to do that. And so kids do impact how money is saved or spent in your entire family. So just that first point of we need to start young with um, giving the children early money management skills. The next point we want to visit about is that parents do play an important role in teaching children how to manage money. Something that we did in our household um, back when our older children were around 12 years of age, we actually, uh, when it was time for me to sit down and pay the bills, uh, I would ask them to uh, help me and be right there to watch me write that check out for um, the water and the sewer utility. You know, too often I think children at that age think, water is free. We turn the faucet on, there's water there, and we don't have to worry about it there. But I needed to let them see that there is a gas bill so that we can have hot water. There is um, a water bill so that we can have showers and so forth. And so I think it's just helpful to start getting kids involved in learning more about what does it take to run a household. I also want to share a story here about a friend who shared this about her daughters. Um, this is a family that uh, they had great value, a value system uh, related to money that was very uh, structured and very well grounded. But she was telling one time about her two daughters. They were close in age, about a year to a year and a half apart. And I believe they were about six and seven and a half years of age at the time. And she commented, she said, I knew my younger daughter would never have money management problems because she charged her friends to play with her toys. And I think it's that thing that kind of does make us a little bit confused because you see there are two kids growing up in the same environment, the same value system that parents uh, gave them, and yet their money management skills were quite different. The older daughter wanted to spend her money as quickly as she had it. 
the younger daughter was much more of a saver. So um, again, we do, as parents, play a very important role in how uh, our children learn to manage their money. The next point is that giving children money whenever they need it or if they are asking for it, instead of on a regular schedule, it makes it hard for them to plan ahead. Now, I already mentioned the money tree in the backyard, so we, we know there isn't such a thing, but we do know that we can start giving children an allowance. Um, but allowances have pros and cons. They actually, um, some people really think that allowances aren't that great, and yet I think that somewhere along the way we need to kind of come to a balance and help children start to identify what they might be saving for. Uh, when they really want something, uh, it's just a great idea to have them have a little bit of money that is their own. So a little bit of allowance would not be a, a bad idea. Uh, something else that you might encourage doing is when a child wants something that's a little bit more expensive or an item that you weren't really planning to buy them, ask, work out a deal with them and see if they will pay half of that uh, amount and perhaps you could ship in the other half if that is something that you would agree upon. Uh, but somehow you need to start working towards giving. Uh, getting children to think about their money and not be just constantly asking for that money. The final point I want to make before we take our first break is that earning money uh, does teach children that money comes from time, skills, and effort. And I believe this is just, again, um, kind of goes back to that idea of allowance. But definitely uh, here we realize that a plan for a five-year-old is going to be very different than what a plan for a teenager, say a 14-year-old, might be. And so again, um, it is kind of a good time to start linking that, you know, if these things happen, then there will, you will get receive a bit of money in compensation for that. Um, there are lots of different programs out there, and I just think it's a great idea to uh, get something started when your child is young. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about helping your child with a spending plan and a little bit more about saving for the future. I'll be back in just a couple of minutes. $10,000 With seven agents in three locations, Hammond Land and Auction Incorporated can meet your every need when it comes to your next sale. Visit them at HammondAuction.com and you'll find all their upcoming sales including farms, ranches, as well as farm equipment and even real estate listings, both residential and commercial. They've been serving western Kansas since 1983 and with offices in Stockton, Russell and Hayes, they're always nearby to assist you. Hammond Land and Auction Incorporated, contact them today. $25,000, $25,000, $25,000. Norton County Hospital would like to welcome Dr. Todd Pankratz, an OBGYN who is now accepting patients. This means women can receive local specialized care for high-risk pregnancies, infertility, medical weight loss, and various surgeries. With Dr. Pankratz and on-staff physicians, the hospital hopes to serve as a premier facility for women's health care, and this care extends to the entire family as more than 60 babies are welcomed here each year. The Norton County Hospital, dedicated to caring, commitment, and community. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Here in the Heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family-owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the next tech directory. 
Make moving and storing your home or business easy with storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria. With two facilities, they can store anything from antiques to automobiles and everything in between. Interior units for items needing special care. Drive up units of all sizes, perfect for home or business. And outside storage for trucks, boats, and RVs. As an authorized U Haul dealer, they have everything for your next move across town or across the country. Storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria, making moving and storing easy. Western Auction and Real Estate LLC is ready to travel to you. Their team includes auctioneers and real estate specialists that will exceed your expectations. They offer experience in agriculture real estate, commercial and residential sales, and farm equipment auctions. Plus, they conveniently travel to your location. And it doesn't stop there. Visit westernauctionandrealestate.com today to shop their online equipment auctions too. For professionalism from concept to completion, it's Western Auction and Real Estate. Welcome back. Again, I'm Donna Krug and today I'm sharing the Extension Ed Talk Kids and Cash. Let's look at a few more points that I think would be helpful as you work with your children to understand money management skills. First of all, to get the most from their money, children need a spending plan. There are several questions you might ask. They are, how much money do I have for spending, saving, and sharing? Also, what are my goals? And then how much will it cost? So these are the three questions that really are important to ask uh, at the beginning to kind of get a feel for what your spending plan might look like. Um, when you think about how much money they have, um, I did bring my piggy banks today. I have one that actually has the money you'll spend, money you will save, money you will share, and then this one actually has a money you will invest. Uh, this one is just a regular piggy bank that you just drop your coins into. But I do like the fact that, that sometimes it is good to start thinking about a spending plan. So how much am I going to have available to purchase something that I want, and how much am I going to save? And then that sharing, we'll talk about that again in a little bit. The second point I want to make is that savings means the most when it is done to reach a goal. And I'm going to share some information from a Money Wise pamphlet that I will show you at the end, but children may understand the concept of saving money when it's designed as postponing spending. Saving allows people to purchase things or meet other goals that they cannot be financed through their current income. And in general, people find it easier to save money if they have a specific goal. And as I mentioned, it's really difficult for a five-year-old to know what they're saving for. <clears throat> Again, five, you know, a five or six-year-old, money is and, and time is so different for them. And I think that um, they need some guidance in what they might be saving for. But if you if you see them or uh, you know looking at an advertisement and you uh, they've asked you for a, a specific ball, uh, perhaps a doll or a bicycle or something, then you could start to plant that seed that maybe that's a little bit more then your budget will allow for, but if they would start saving their money that maybe by, by the end of summer we would have the money to, to go shopping for that. And so get them to, to understand the concept of time and saving. And then again, as children do get a little bit older, we know that they have definite wants, uh, probably some needs as well, but definitely get them to think about what they are willing to save up for and how you might uh, work with them on that. Let's go to the third point of this slide. We know that a spending plan needs to be simple and suited to your needs. And one of the very first things that I think needs to happen is that we need to get an idea of how much the child is actually spending in a week's time. And so I have this very simple uh, method for tracking spending. So I want to show it to you now. It's very simple. I grabbed some green paper at the office just because it's the color of money, but you can actually use any piece of paper, uh, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And we're going to fold it in half. And then we're going to fold it in half one more time so that it looks like this. And then actually we're going to fold it one more time. 
So it's a little bit bigger than a credit card, uh, but it still would easily fit into a pocket or into a wallet, or it could be put on the, the dresser of your, uh, the mirror or the mirror in the bathroom, or it could be put on the refrigerator. This, but, but let me tell you what we're going to do with it now. We're going to open it back up, and what we would ask for you to help your child do is to just simply write the days of the week in each of the rectangles. And of course, there are just seven, so there's an extra rectangle here at the bottom. And for that, we would write the word total, T-O-T-A-L. And what we would do with this sheet of paper then is we would have the child track their spending, see what they're spending their money on. So when they um, are maybe coming home from school and they their friends say, let's ride our bike in here uh, to uh, pick up a, a drink or something at the uh, quick shop, then that needs to be recorded. We need to know what extra things are they spending their money on. And so what happens is after a week of, of their uh, spending, we would total that up and we would see how much money they spend in a week. And then that would just help them to understand, um, you know, if I'm saving for something, but I've spent, you know, $9.48, um, I am not going to reach my goal quite as quickly. The neat thing about this spending plan also is that you can actually turn it over and you can use it for a second week. So you can then again put the days of the week, the word total at the end, and you can then keep track of spending. So it's really a quite simple thing. I actually do this same activity with adults that I am teaching money management classes to, but I think it could work for probably adolescent and older, preteens definitely, should start working with a spending plan so that they know how much money they need to be planning to spend and also how much money they might have to save. So this is a great uh, little tool. What I always tell people is if you do this uh, about three times, in other words, about six weeks of, of a spending plan, it becomes a habit. And when you realize that you're going to have to write down everything you spend money on, sometimes you think about it and maybe say, I wonder if I need that or if I just want it. And so I think that's very helpful to, uh, to the young children and I think that they maybe need that bit of discipline. So I really encourage you to just get a simple piece of paper and develop a spending plan. It's time for another break. When we come back, I will finish with the final three points and then show you the resources that I used for the Kids in Cash program. $10,000 With seven agents in three locations, Hammond Land and Auction Incorporated can meet your every need when it comes to your next sale. Visit them at HammondAuction.com and you'll find all their upcoming sales including farms, ranches, as well as farm equipment and even real estate listings, both residential and commercial. They've been serving western Kansas since 1983 and with offices in Stockton, Russell and Hayes, they're always nearby to assist you. Hammett Land and Auction Incorporated, contact them today. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Here in the Heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family-owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the next tech directory. Make moving and storing your home or business easy with storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria. With two facilities, they can store anything from antiques to automobiles and everything in between. Interior units for items needing special care. Drive up units of all sizes, perfect for home or business. And outside storage for trucks, boats, and RVs. As an authorized U-Haul dealer, they have everything for your next move across town or across the country. Storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria. Making moving and storing easy. 
Western Auction and Real Estate LLC is ready to travel to you. Their team includes auctioneers and real estate specialists that will exceed your expectations. They offer experience in agriculture real estate, commercial and residential sales, and farm equipment auctions. Plus, they conveniently travel to your location. And it doesn't stop there. Visit westernauctionandrealestate.com today to shop their online equipment auctions too. For professionalism from concept to completion, it's Western Auction and Real Estate. Welcome back to our final se segment of Kids in Cash. Uh, I want to share three more points with you today. And the first one is that instead of being victims of advertising uh, pressure, children can learn to use advertising as a source of useful information. You know, children tend to be impulse buyers. When they see something advertised or when they see their friend riding down the street on one of those little scooters, then they immediately think that's what they have to have. And so we really need to be very cognizant of that and really work with children to understand that not everything that is advertised is really good for them. Um, I took a class, an online class one time through the University of Minnesota, and it actually was targeting uh, obesity in children, and it talked about all the marketing that is targeted to our adolescent children. And there are certainly, if they are doing, if they are watching a lot of screen time, whether that is TV or computer, uh, even computer games, they are going to be really influenced by advertisements. Uh, there is something called adver games, and I was not familiar with it, but I understand, that, again, if children, uh, just like you as an adult, if you are um, on one of the social media sites, and you know, it's like, how did they figure out that I, am, that I was shopping for a new washing machine? <laughs> You've maybe Googled a couple sites, and the next thing you know, you start getting little cookies, little advertisements, and the same thing happens as children are navigating uh, using computers or, or doing too much screen time. So I would say that one of the big things with advertising is limiting screen time. You know, we really recommend, and here's my uh, nutrition and health and wellness coming out, but we really recommend that children have at least 60 minutes a day of physical activity. And so we know that, you know, getting out and kicking a soccer ball around, taking the dog for a walk, or going for a bike ride are really better choices than than uh, being in front of that screen and getting bombarded with all of those advertisements. They say that three hours of screen time uh, a day, an average of that, puts uh, about 10,000 advertisements in front of a child in, in a year's time. And I don't know about you, but when I hear something a few times, it becomes ingrained in me. And so uh, 10,000 just sounds like a, a, a too much and too much time in front of the TV. The second point that I want to make is that children learn by doing, and there is no better way to teach money management than by letting the child learn uh, to manage money, their own money. And there will be some mistakes that children make, and I want to just point out a few of those here now. One of the first ones is losing money. You know, it might be that a child is a bit careless or it may have happened accidentally, but it's that kind of um, mistake that children can learn from. Also, if something gets broken, perhaps a, a neighbor's window gets broken in a game of uh, soccer or baseball, then that can also uh, be a teachable moment to teach kids that, you know, it's your responsibility if you broke something that you then uh, earn the money to replace that window or to at least go and apologize and say, how can I make this right? Also, I hate to say this word, but stealing is also in, it could be a money mistake. And I think it's a great time to encourage children to understand that you can't take something that is not yours. And I mean, this can happen at a very young age. Even a four or five year old who is just learning about sharing toys needs to understand that it will be the same way when they have money to spend on items as well. Um, there are also a couple of other things that, you know, you can have a child who actually hoards their money that just saves it all the time and doesn't ever want to spend it. And then you can have the opposite of that where the child just spends money like a spending spree all of the time. And I think for those instances, you need to really work with your child and say, you know what, if you've spent that money that you earmarked for something you really wanted, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to work 
a little harder. You're going to have to do another job for the neighbor or somehow put some money away before we go shopping for that item. So again, money can cause uh, some problems to arise, but I think if you work through those, that it can actually turn into a learning situation. I want to share one more story. I actually shared with my daughter earlier this week that I was going to be taping this, and uh, she shared with me what, uh, something that happened uh, when they were teaching their young daughter. She now is nine, but I believe this happened when she was five or six, and she had started uh, saving money for some things that she might want. These weren't needs, but they were things she wanted, and so she um, found something at a store, a little purse, and she really wanted it. And she said, I will buy it. And her parents said, do you have your money with you? And she says, no, but I'll pay you back when I get home. And they said, no, uh, we're going to wait till you come to the store with your money. So they went back home and she was quite disappointed as you can imagine. But uh, she was so worried because they didn't go back that same day. They went back a couple days later and she was really worried that the purse wouldn't be there. But uh, actually the purse was there and the purse was on sale. And so she actually did have her money in hand. She purchased it and she got money back. So again, that little situation that could have been very disappointing turned into a very good learning situation. Our final point before I show you the resources is something that we've talked about throughout this whole presentation and that is the best teacher is a parent who sets a good example. So if I have struck a nerve on any of the things I've talked about, maybe, maybe a parent needs to adopt the spending plan. And if so, uh, get that sheet of paper out and start writing down the things that you spend money on as well. And then just think about every time you are making purchases and maybe you are talking about money in front of children. You know, we don't want children to, ha to feel hurt or bad. We don't want them to feel very uh, worried about money, but we want them to, f to feel like they are learning about money. So be honest with children, but also be very careful because they are like little sponges. And then I just want to remind you that we have the, the piggy banks here. And if you need to start a piggy bank, it's a good idea to, again, have money that you spend, money that you save, money that you might uh, share, uh, and that's another good thing to start teaching children at a young age is to share with other people or take money to perhaps a church or Sunday school where you worship, uh, but learn about helping others. All right, let's go to the money management resource slide and I'll just show you the three things that I have to show you today. Um, the three things are a Money Wise, Helping Children Learn to Manage Money. It is an older publication, but I think it is still available in many of our extension offices across Kansas. So this is the uh, money, what it looks like, the Money Wise. And so I took a lot of the information that I have shared with you out of this booklet. So this is a great resource. Another resource that I would like to share with you is this one called Money Talks, Should I Be Listening? This is actually from the uh, State of California Extension Service and it's really geared more to the teens. And it's a great publication that has them uh, put some of their habits down and then it also talks about a savings plan. And that's something I really didn't get to with children but it's really good as children become teenagers to talk about the time factor and how saving money over a long period period of time really does add up and so that's another good uh, reference that you might look for and that would probably be available online. And then uh, this is an older publication that I put together to do some teaching at our high school in Great Bend and it's called Does Your Money Have Wings? And again it has some handouts in it that would actually just teach kids about money management and certainly about uh, saving money for the future. So this would also be a good one and it has that same book uh, chart in it that talks about how when you save money at a young age it does add up. So I hope you've enjoyed our visit today about kids and cash and I will uh, enjoy sharing another Extension Ed Talk, Ed Talk with you in the future. Thank you. Mm -hmm.